the DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast in every state in the Union present the best of Groucho. Groucho's on vacation, friends, and while he's away, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer brings you some of the best shows of previous seasons, shows that you've told us you'd like to see again. We hope you enjoy them each week this summer. You bet your life. And now, here he is with one of his best shows from the past, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Don't even say the secret word. The duck will come down and pay him $100. The word tonight is uh, sky. Cute little rascal. All right, that's enough now. Well, Groucho, we invited some young engineers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Michael Markakis. His partner is Miss Janet Farrington Rouse. Folks, please come in here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, Rouse for the engineer. Bring him in. <laughs> well, how do you do? How do you do? Well, welcome, young kids, youngsters, for the result of Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word, and you'll divide a hundred smackers. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss Janet uh, Farrington Rouse, huh? That's right. That's a pretty fancy moniker you got there, Janet. Huh? Sounds like you were uh, come from the polo set in Long Island. How, how old are you, Janet? Twenty-five. Twenty-five, huh? Are, are you married? No, I'm single. Single, huh? Michael Markakis, uh, Markakis, Markakis, huh? Markakis. That's kind of an odd name. What kind of a name is that? It's a Greek name. A Greek? No. Oh. Uh, how old are you? Thirty-one. Are you married? No. Oh, another one. <laughs> so have that. Would you like to get married? I've thought of it. No, that's not what I asked you. <laughs> Everybody's thought of it. I asked if you'd like to get married. I really don't know. How about you? Do you know? Uh, whether he wants to get married or not? No, whether you want to get married. <laughs> I, don't I know, know you think him. that he wants to get married, but uh, how do you feel about it? Uh, I think it's a fine thing for many people. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. What sort of work do you do? Uh, my, I'll get back to this in a minute. <laughs> you haven't read the last of this, uh, Miss Rouse. I don't think so either. What sort of work do you do, Mike? I'm an electronics engineer. Oh, is that so? Well, where do you drive the streetcar? <laughs> It, it has nothing to do with streetcars. It doesn't? Well, how do you get to work? <laughs> Drive to work. But uh, seriously, Mike, um, the comedian always says seriously after he has said something that hasn't gotten a laugh. <laughs> no, true. They say something and go on for three or four minutes and there isn't a sound in the audience. And then they say, seriously, folks, I'd like to talk to you about... Uh, uh, which also doesn't get a laugh, as I just discovered. <laughs> How does the science of electronics contribute to our daily life? I think, think you're acquainted with uh, most of the things that we have around us all the time. There's I'm a, acquainted with them? Yeah, I mean, like these lights and well, old lights radios, and lights, yes. television radios, sets, like you mentioned. Yeah. But, That's pretty uh, elementary stuff, you know, isn't it? Huh? Well, there's, there's other more interesting things, say like a, a vacuum cleaner that they've been playing around with lately. They have a photoelectric cell on the front end of it. And, uh, and so you can see if the maid is doing her job properly? No, the, the vacuum cleaner does its own work. When the, when the sun comes up in the morning, well, the vacuum cleaner, the, the photoelectric cell tells the vacuum cleaner to come out of the closet. And, and it heads for the lights, you see. And every time it bumps a wall, it changes and goes in a different direction. Well, how do people protect their... Excuse me, can I ask you... No, I, well, I'd be... <laughs> I know the secret way, too, you. <laughs> and the answer to the big question. <laughs> Am I going to make money here tonight? What are you doing later, kid? Huh? Can I ask him a serious you, question? You certainly can. Um, uh, if it isn't too serious. What do, what do you do about it? It's running into good pieces of furniture. Mothers are always worried about, you know, Chippendale legs being run into by children running yeah, vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Does your mother have Chippendale legs? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to... Don't you want it back? No, no, I prefer it this way. I'm going to come in here every week at this time. Huh? But seriously, folks. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, have you answered her question? Uh, 
uh, it repels itself automatically. Yes, automatically. And then, and then uh, there's a light bulb in the closet so that when the sun goes down, well, the, the vacuum cleaner automatically heads back for the closet. Now, just a moment. Suppose it's raining. <laughs> what does that got to do with the light bulb in the... In the uh... Suppose it's raining. You say when the sun goes down, the vacuum cleaner goes back in the closet. <laughs> well, I guess... When the sun goes down in my house, the maid goes back in the closet. <laughs> Even before the sun goes down. Right? Around noon, she goes back in the closet. You try it here for a while. Huh? <laughs> this is an awfully dizzy back. Yes, it certainly is. I, I'm tired of standing up. Would you mind taking this seat no, for a while? No, you, you... Fine. Using your chair, as we call it. <laughs> In just one minute, you're going to play your life. Uh, you're going to <laughs> play your life. But seriously, folks, now. <laughs> in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the fifteen hundred dollar question. Mm. Let's see how high you can bet your twenty dollars. You selected. Uh, what's the number? This is a test of your powers of observation, and you must agree conclusively on each of these answers before you give it to me. All right. Here's your first question. How much are you going to go for? Uh. Uh, I want to bet all but three cents. All but three cents? Yeah, I think that would be the best. Can we do that all but three cents? Yes. Uh, all right. <laughs> I don't think she approves of this, Mike. Uh, well, it's, 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 it's all right. I don't want to persuade you. All right. How many cigarettes are there in a standard pack? I don't smoke. Twenty. 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 Twenty is right. You're right. <laughs> You're on your way with $39.97. Remember, you're going for $1,500 a night. How much of the $39.97 are you going to try this time? What's well, all but two cents. All but two cents? All right. All right. How many checkers are used in a checker game? 24. Wait. 24 is right. <laughs> You now have... I don't get any more help now. Huh? <laughs> you now have seventy-nine dollars and ninety-seven, uh, ninety-two cents. Well, and here's your third question: How much will you bet? All but a penny. Yeah, let's, let's go. All right. <clears throat> now one answer. How many white stripes are there in the American flag? How many white stripes? White stripes. Yes. Oh. Six, six and seven. Right. It would have to be six or seven. Well, it wouldn't start on the white on the outside, so it must be. One white. answer now. Six. six. Okay. What's the answer, you two? Six. 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 Six is right. You've now climbed to one hundred fifty-nine dollars and eighty-three cents. No. Here's no, your last chance thing. to beat the, the other thing. couples. You're yeah. going to bet the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. One hundred and fifty-nine dollars and eighty-three cents. Mm -hmm. How many keys are there on a standard piano keyboard? Oh. Lord. Um. Eight times thirteen, three to twenty-four. There are eight keys in an octave. Do you know how many octaves there are? And then there's five keys. Come on, kids. Time's up. 54. No, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's 88. Oh. Gee. I forgot the black keys. Well, they went broke. Well, back, huh? when nobody leaves here broke, I'm going to give you one more question. Get this right, and you'll split $25 between you. Are you ready? Yes. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Mrs. Grant. Mrs. Grant is right, huh? <laughs> Thanks and a happy new year from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We asked for some housewives to volunteer tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, we selected Mrs. Josie Bell Muir. Her partner is Mr. Tony Gamero. So, folks, please come in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Josie Bell Muir and Mr. Tony Gamero. Huh? That's correct. Mrs. Muir, uh, I don't know you well enough to call you Josie Bell. I'll just call you Josie, huh? All right, Groucho. <laughs> I'm afraid of him. You're afraid of me? Yeah. I'm the most harmless creature you've ever looked at, huh? All right, I'll call I may down. give you my seat before I'm through here. I hope not, because you talk more than I do. That's unusual. <laughs> I talk a lot. Well, we'll soon find out who's the biggest chatterbox here. Huh? How old are you, Josie? Now, I shouldn't tell, but I'm 45. Well, you don't look it. I thought you were about 35. Thank you. See, a minute ago, she was afraid of me. Now she's throwing kisses at me. <laughs> but seriously, folks. <laughs> Mr. Tony Gamero, is that the way you pronounce your name? Yes, Groucho. What does your wife call you? 
I have no wife. How old are you, Tony? I'm 45. Where are you from? Uh, Durango, Mexico. Antonio, is Mrs. Gamero from Mexico or the United States? There is no Mrs. Gamero. That's a shame. What happened to her? Huh? I've never been married. Still sticking with that cock and bull story, huh? <laughs> Have you ever been engaged? Uh, yes, uh, you might say that. I just did say it. <laughs> what happened? She was too rich. What do you mean, you drifted apart? Well, we, we did, we drifted apart, yes. Were you conducting your romance on a life raft or something? No. You say she was too rich? Yes, her family was very wealthy, and I was, I was afraid that I uh, could afford what uh, she was accustomed to. I see. That is her station in life. Did it ever occur to you that you could have become accustomed to living the way she did? <laughs> yes, it does now. <laughs> Well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. You beat our other couples, and you get a chance at the $1,500 question. Miss Rouse and the electronics engineer lost all their money, so these people have a clear field, and the secret word is sky. Here we go. Let's see how high I can bridge your $20. Out of our list of 20 categories, you selected number eight, capitals of Latin American countries. You ought to be good on this. Here's your first question. Talk real loud. Now, how much will you bet? Let's make it 1953. I've got that one, yeah. All right. What is the capital city of Brazil? I... Uh, one answer between you. Now, talk it over before you answer. You have to agree on this. All right, come on. Rio de Janeiro. That's right. Rio de Janeiro is right. You to say one thing and she to say another thing. That you now have $39.53. Mommy, you're going for $1,500 now. Now, how much 38. is this? 30? How much? 38 You better ask her. Is that all right? 38 all right, what is the capital city of Peru? Uh, Lima. L Lima is right. You now have $77 and 53 cents. Here's your third question. How much of this will you bet? 75. All right, 75. 75. All right. What is the capital city of Chile? Uh, Santiago. All right, Santiago is right. <laughs> All right, it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of this $152.53 are you going to risk? $150. Come on, kids. All of it, go. okay, all, all of it. All of it. What is the capital city of Nicaragua? Talk it over. Uh, One answer. Oh, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Uh, uh, Caracas. No, Nicaragua. Huh? One answer between you. Nicaragua. Come on, you got five seconds. Nicaragua. Wait a minute. Nicomas? I can't think of it. Nicomas, whatever. No, I can't I'm, pronounce it. I'm sorry. It's uh, Managua, I guess. M A N A G U A. Managua. Yeah, that's right. I'm well, sorry. Well, they went broke. Yeah. Huh? Well, nobody leaves here broke. I'm going to give you one more question. Get this right, and you'll spread $25. Are you ready? Ready. What time of day do you go to night school? <laughs> night time. Night. night time is right. <laughs> I have a housewife for you now, Groucho, Mrs. Fern Spaulding Jaros. Her uh, partner is an astronomer, Dr. D. Alter. Folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Fern Spaulding Jaros. That's right. Uh, uh, you're a housewife? That's right. And uh, Dr. Alter, eh? You're right. And you're a doctor, Doc, huh? I am. Well, I've had a pain in my ear lately. I may need new glasses, so I wish you'd take a look at my teeth. Would you, Doc? Well, I'm sorry. I'm not a medical doctor, and I'm not a dentist, and I'm not a doctor of optometry. Well, what kind of, what are you? An astronomer. Oh. Well, would you take a look at my stars? They're up here. Well, I'd like to. Mrs. Jaros, uh, is that right? Yes. Fine, huh? Mm -hmm. Where are you from, Fine? That's a pretty name, Fine. Thank you. I'm from Loveland, Ohio. Well, that's a lovely city to be from. I huh? think so. Hey, do you mind if I ask how old you are, Fine? No, I don't. How old are <laughs> Well, how old are you? I'm 44. Well, you don't look it. You look like 30. Thank you. <laughs> What's your secret? You, you look uh, much younger than 44. Well, I don't know. I don't carouse or... 
<laughs> burn the candle at both ends, maybe. You are, uh, as you are, you know, you just what you are. If I was what I am, I'd be in jail. <laughs> Fine. Getting back to you, are you married? Yes, I am. Did you meet your husband in Loveland? No. No, I didn't. Well, how'd you meet your husband? Well, I met my husband when I was playing in an all-girls orchestra. What was he doing in an all-girls orchestra? <laughs> I mean, besides fiddling around. <laughs> well, his sister was subbing. Uh, I was playing trombone in the orchestra at the State Lake Theater in Chicago. Oh, I played the State Lake Theater in you Chicago. Did? Yeah. Do you still play the trombone? Uh, no, I gave it up and had three children. Well, that trombone suddenly became the horn of plenty. Of <laughs> Let's talk about astronomy for a minute, huh? Just, just what is it? I know it deals with the stars, but there must be more to it than that. Well, do you want the ordinary definition or the technical definition? Well, I'm not crazy about either, as a matter of fact. I presume there is a difference. And well... Let's have the technical definition. I don't think I want to understand it. What is astronomy? Astronomy is the father of the physical sciences. It is concerned with the organization of the cosmos from an observational, a mathematical, and an astrophysical point of view. Now, are there any questions? And that's astronomy, eh? Yes. If you ask me, I think you've got fly specks on the end of your telescope. <laughs> Could be true, you know. You think you're looking at Jupiter. <laughs> Where do you observe these heavenly bodies? Do you park your car down in the corner and charge 10 cents a look? No. I'm director of the Griffith Observatory. In, Gr in Griffith Park? Yes. And you're the director of the observatory in Griffith Park, huh? Yes. Well, I've observed a few things in Griffith Park myself. <laughs> oh, right. Well, it's an honor to have you here, Doc. And after all the time you spent looking up, uh, must uh, make you feel good to have somebody that you can look down on for a change. <laughs> Tell us something about Griffith uh, Observatory. For example, what's your biggest attraction up there? We have three parts of the observatory. There's the uh, museum, of astronomy and the physical sciences, about 600,000 people visit it a year, and it's free. Then we have a big telescope, and sometimes as many as 600 people look through that on a single night. At once? No, uh, there are five nights a week we have it open, if it's clear. Uh -huh. And then during the summer, we have that trip to the moon. Well, tell us about this trip to the moon. How much well, is it going to cost, and uh, when are you starting? Well, suppose I took you to the theater. I'd seat you in there, and it'd get dark. Then suddenly... How dark would it get? Black. Then you see the moon just as an ordinary-sized moon, and gradually it grows. If you're like most of the audience, you'll forget that it's a picture at all. It looks surreal. Then we start traveling over the moon, and you see the different mountains and the craters, very famous craters like Copernicus. This Jack crater up there? You... A lot of it. Huh? Passing through the window, and at last we turn around to look at the Earth up there in the sky. Right. We, uh... Now, you said sky, so you and this uh, Miss Loveland over here each get $50. Oh, you'll get yours in a few... This duck is ruining me tonight. Beat it, will you? <laughs> I should have asked him about the lower portions. He couldn't have mentioned Sky at all. Well, let's get down to Earth now, Doc. Uh, fine. Uh, you say you play the trombone? That's right. Tell us how you play a trombone. I imagine some of our listeners might find this information useful. Well, Certainly the fellow who plays one in our orchestra could send some instruction. <laughs> how do you play this slip horn? Well, uh, you place the mouthpiece on your mouth, and then you bring your lips back, and uh, then you spit the tone in, and you say, poo. You can't, you can't say foo or 
poo or anything like that, it has to be spit in because it's got to be clean. That's one of the filthiest explanations I've ever heard. Now, Frame, we have a trombone player. You know, if we borrow this horn, could we persuade you to knock off a few jazzy bars? Oh, I'd rather not drown you. Oh, come now, Frame. Slip us something real way out, real George. Like uh, feet up, pat him on the popo. Oh, I don't play This is the beginning of a new year, you know. Let's have something appropriate, fine. Fire and fall back. Ah, a boy, George. Well. George never fails me in a pinch. <laughs> talking to you two, but the time has come to win a sizable fortune. You win more than our other couples, you'll get a chance at the $1,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, Mr. Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. Both couples lost all their money. Here we go. Let's see how high can build you $20. All these expressions have to do with trials and court procedure. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? I suppose you try... Let's try 16. Okay. Fine. Sweet 16. All right. What is the spokesman for the jury call? One answer now. Talk it over. The foreman. Foreman is right. Well, you're on your way. You have $36. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of the $36 will you bet on your second question? 32. Okay. What do you call the list of cases scheduled for trial? The docket. The docket is absolutely right. You now have $68. And here's your third question. How much will you bet? $64. Okay. $64. 64 What is the person called who brings the suit to court? The plaintiff. The plaintiff? I thought it was a tailor, but it is the plaintiff, huh? <laughs> you now have $132. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of this money are you going to bet? Shoot the works. Let's have a little bit for ourselves. <laughs> Let's make it uh, about 120. Then we'll have $4 left. What do we do with it? I don't know. <laughs> That's up to you for your side. Well, you can decide that later, huh? Uh, 128. 128. All right, 128. What do you call it when a person gives false information while under oath? Perjury. Perjury. You are absolutely right, Herr Doctor. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a nice apology? And you wind up with $260, and that means that you two, in just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. <laughs> well, here's the astronomer and his partner, Groucho, the winning couple, all set for the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. Well, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please know up in the audience. Here it is. With the inaugural ceremonies in Washington not too far away, this question is quite topical. For $1,500, tell me, who was the first president to be inaugurated in Washington, D.C.? Talk it over. Madison? No, I'm sorry. It's Thomas Jefferson. 
So that means the big question next week will be worth two thousand dollars. Well, they lost the big money, but how much did they win in the quiz, George? Uh, two hundred and sixty dollars in the quiz. Well, congratulations and a happy new year to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Don't forget the dealers who sell the stunning DeSoto Automatic also sell the High Style Plymouth. Both great cars, products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for the best of Groucho.